connect with connect with the Lord and really hear what he has to say to us through one another. And um, we're so grateful for this time together. So grateful for answer prayers. So grateful for the ability to talk to the God who comes and sees about us, who thinks about us, who, as someone said, who has us on his mind. And we are so grateful, so grateful for that. We're looking at the word on tonight. Tonight we're looking at uh, the 139th division of the psalm. Psalm 139, we'll see a familiar portion of scripture here, Psalm 139. And we're going to focus on two verses of this psalm, uh, 23 and 24. The word of God is, is on the screen here. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Verse 24, and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Uh, we're going to use the title Courageous Prayers, Courageous Prayers. I don't know if you're familiar with the United States Constitution, uh, but in the Constitution, there are several amendments. And, and one of the amendments, we, we hear a lot of talk about these amendments, like First Amendment rights. You get to be able to say whatever I want to say. You know, we, we talk about Second Amendment right, particularly in our part of the country, the right to bear arms, the right to have a, have a weapon uh, in your home or in your vehicle. All of those things are argued about. Uh, but one of the rights that is also argued about, particularly in our community, is the Fourth Amendment rights. So in the Fourth Amendment right, uh, we have the right to not have an illegal search. We have to sign off on a search. We have to be able to allow uh, an authority to be able to search us or, uh, and if we don't, then that thing is illegal. We don't want, as a matter of fact, a lot of people have gotten off of really dangerous crimes that they probably did because their, their Fourth Amendment rights were violated. Uh, Fourth Amendment rights are, are really strong and uh, we, we really don't wanna have someone else looking at our stuff, right? having someone else in our business is like, uh, I, I don't really want to deal with that. And especially because, you know, particularly uh, in our community, in a black community, there's a lot of times we're unfairly targeted. It, this, this, this stop and frisk thing has, has gone on and, and we don't, we, we don't want you planting something. We don't want you bringing something uh, uh, that's not quite ours into the situation. As a matter of fact, we would rather, even in our relationship with God, we'd rather search ourselves, right? We'd rather tell God uh, what he can have. We, we would rather have that relationship where we can just connect with God in that way. But our text today asks God, is, is asking God, he, he, he is waiving our rights and saying, Lord, search me. Search me, God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. What a courageous prayer to pray. Uh, God's, God's kids, a lot of times we tend to pray safer prayers. We tend to talk about just the randomness of life. As a matter of fact, sometimes, um, too often, we memorize the prayer. And it just comes out of our mouths just as, as it wrote instead of really praying these prayers that, that, that are challenging God. And now it's not challenging to God, but, but for us, it's, it's, it's pushing our level of faith in God to say, God, I know you promised that you can do something and, and I'm, tr I'm putting you on the line for it. And one of the hardest things for us to give up is our own rights to ourselves. 
we don't like to give up our rights to ourselves. We like to, even when we're dealing with our relationship with God, we want levels of boundaries. You know, uh, we, we like boundaries with individuals too, right? We like, we like a, you know, if you have a spouse, you oh, you don't take all the covers, you know, don't, don't take all the covers. I need, I need my covers. You know, <laughs> if somebody is, is using your stuff, you better please return my things on time. I, I need my things back on time. We want boundaries. And a lot of times the boundary need that we have, because we have a need with, uh, with each other, but that flows into our relationship with God. And so we say, God, this is your area and this is my area. And so, and a lot of times in that situation, we're not able to really get into the deep relationship that God would have for us to have with him. It takes a level of trust to say, yeah, God, I'm going to surrender these things to you, but it takes an even deeper and more courageous le level to say, God, you go in my house, you come in my life and you search me. You look for what you want. You deal with this situation. Man, it's so courageous to do that. And, and David is asking God to do that, knowing that God is a loving God, knowing that he cares for us, knowing that he's concerned, knowing that he's not coming in to destroy. He's not coming in to, to find reason to arrest him. You know, he's, he's not busting open the door to say, I let me find some contraband so I can send you and condemn you. No, 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 no. Uh, that, that's what the, the authority. That's what the police do when they, they, they use that search and seizure mentality. But God is not that. No, God is coming in in order to restore relationship. God is coming in to show us where our relationship with him is waning, where, where we're disconnected in ways, where, where, where there are different places where we're not where he would have us to be. God is coming in so he can he can know us and he already knows what we are, but it's more so he can he can show us who we are, because a lot of times we don't even know who we are ourselves. Remember, Jer uh, Jer uh, Jeremiah says the heart is deceitful, which is really bad. Who can know it? Only God know the heart. Only God is the one who searches the heart. And, and a lot of things we think are OK are really not. Uh, that that sin of pride makes us think that a lot of the things that we do are, are wonderful. The, the crazy thing about sin is it makes everything seem okay. And only by God coming in and searching us and trying us and, and, and revealing our inner motives even, because sometimes we do good things for bad reasons. Sometimes we want people to look good, nice, look at us in a particular way so we do different good things. And God is saying, no, nah, that doesn't count for anything. That, that does not mean anything to me. I need you to be connected with me so that what flows out of you is my spirit, is, is coming straight from me. God is not doing this in order to condemn. God is doing this in order to save, in order to reconcile. He's trying to reconcile us to himself so that we can be mirror images of Jesus Christ. And so when people see us, they see Jesus and they want to have a connection, a deeper connection with Jesus. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get his love out into this world. We know how messed up this world is. We see every all the foolishness around us every single day. And, and I hear people even, even I even hear people talking about, man, ooh, this is this bad times and this, this is horrible times. We need to find a place to go. And I'm like, no. God put us as lights in this dark. The darker the place, the brighter the light. And so we should say, thank you, Lord, for putting me in a place where, where there's some different stuff going on. Thank you for putting me in a place of darkness so that your light can shine all the greater. I don't need to go and so, go someplace where there's a bunch of lights already and I just kind of blend in with the light. No, I need to go where it's dark. I need to go where people can see your grace. I need to go where, where people can, can be magnified and, and, and be transformed in a mighty way because of your grace and your love that's flowing through me, even though all around me is going on is foolishness. God is trying to do something special in us. And, and I want to dare you. I want to, I want to cha challenge you tonight to say, God, like David, search me. I don't, I'm not locking any doors in my life. 
I'm not holding off any parts of my life to, from you. I'm not saying you can't go in that room. I'm not saying you can't go in that closet. I'm not saying it. No, search it all. And whatever you see in me, whether it's my thoughts, whether it's my actions, whether it's my motives, whatever you see in me, fix it and lead me in the way everlasting. I want to challenge us in this day and time to pray that prayer, to say in these times that we're living in, God, I want you to search me. I want to be among that number who is, because I, I, I don't know about you, but I know God is coming soon, y'all. I believe we could be in the Joshua generation. This could be the generation that sees in place that, that, uh, that, that God is coming in those clouds. And if we are that generation, and I'm not saying, I, I don't know the time, nobody knows the day or the hour, don't get me on that. But, but if we are among that people, what type of people ought we to be? What, uh, what, what level of holiness, what level of godliness, what level of, of attraction, what must we have with God? We must be a people who are so consumed with the living God that no matter what, we are so connected with him. And, and, and in order to get there, I want to challenge you to pray that prayer. Search me, oh God. Anything in me, you take it away. Find anything not like you, as that old song said. Take it away. Do your thing in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And he will do it. When we ask, when we pray these courageous prayers that God asks us to pray, he can't wait to hear our prayer. He can't wait to respond. Yeah, yeah there are different prayers that God may say, you know, we ask for different things. We pray, oh, my, my, my brother is sick. My, my, my mother has these different illnesses. I have these financial issues. God may say, no, that's not really uh, in line with what I'm trying to do in you. So I might leave you in that circumstance. And it's all right. But there are certain prayers we pray and God says, no, I'm automatically going to answer that thing. When we pray to be free from sin, he automatically answers that thing. When we pray and ask him to search us and try us, he says, thank you. You opened the door. You waved your right to yourself. I'm going to come in and I'm going to do something amazing in your life. I'm going to challenge you tonight to pray that prayer. And God is going to do something amazing in your life. Father. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for desiring to have a closer bonded relationship with us. God, is, there, there are some different things in us and we know, we feel it. Uh, we, we are wander prone, as the song says. We're prone to wander. We feel it within us, God. We're, we're, we're so prone to leave the God we love. There are different things in us from the world and so, so things that pull us in different directions. But God, we pray that you would come in, that you would search us, that you would try us, that you would look under every nook and cranny in our lives and that you would do when you find something that's not like you, because we know we're flawed. We know that we need your Holy Spirit's press power. We know we need to be made over. When you find something that you would remake it and lead us in the way everlasting, all the way to glory. May we hear the words, well done, good and faithful servants. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.